to Subnautica, and no I do not have a flashlight, <laughs> this be a sea glide, and here is an abandoned base. Uh, you access this by coming up on the beach, or like me if you come up through that little hole in the island, then you have to kind of hunt for it, it takes a little bit of getting to, but the beach is on the if you're approaching from the life pod, it's on the back right side. It'll save you 40 seconds or whatever trying to find your way through. And there's some good food. Marble melon. And... Yeah. So you can't really get in here very well. Um, window's broken there. You can just hop in. Scan the desk so you can build one later on. Oh yeah, and normally that has a little f sound file that it plays with it. I'm surprised it didn't. Um, where'd it go? Oh, here it is. Data downloads. Degasi survivors. If you want to read this, just feel free to pause it. Um, yeah, nothing too fancy. But nice that they're adding a little bit of story in there. Okay, cool. Moving on. And there's usually like a little storage compartment, whatever they're called, in the top. Um, yeah, I can see it there. So you kind of have to get a little fancy getting up here. Supply crate. Okay. First aid kit, that's nice. And down here is the living wall. Uh, I don't know if this is still just decorational or if it helps with oxygen in the base. Uh, I don't know. But you can scan it. Works out. And it looks kind of cool, let's be honest. Oh, and another supply crate. Nice. And can't squeeze through that door. So the only way out of here is to go back up. Oh, and there's another PDA on the ground. Cool. Struck by some kind of weapon. Oh no. <laughs> oh, apparently there's a spotlight on the other side of the wall. And I can scan it. Nice. Cool. So I can't see it, but whatever. I think that's all that's in here. Um, don't go down in that. I don't even know if you can. I've never tried. But it looks like if you did... Ooh, cool shadow. Looks like if you did, you'd get stuck. Okay. So the two peaks, the two little mountains here, each have an abandoned base on them. And each of them has their own little goodies. And so I'm going to head up to both of those. And as I mentioned in the last episode, sometimes you deal with invisible walls, and when you jump, it reacts weird. Um little bit of fine-tuning here for sure. See, I, I'm just trying to climb up and jumping all over the place. But if you jump a little earlier than you think you need to, then usually it seems to work okay. And the pathway here can be a little bit hidden, but it's just kind of the lighter brown dirt that you can follow all the way up. And if you get stuck, just try going left to right, back up and then jump, because if you jump when you're up against the wall, your character will jump backwards, and that's not very fun. I've done it plenty of times. Okay, so we're up here. Another spotlight, in case we didn't get that one before. Things freaking out a little bit. And this is what really what I came for. Um, not the observatory fragment, although that's nice. Um, but this interior grow bed is what I want. Nice. And the re 
reason being is because these hanging fruit trees. This is how I survive in this game. You can plant like 20 of these in your base. Really, you only need like 5. But you'll never run out of food or anything. They do spoil quite quickly. And so that's the only value of keeping fish around. But even fish, if you cook them, will spoil in your inventory. So if you're going out deep sea, take lots of water with you and uh, one of the thermo blades that you make with the, uh, whoops, went, went, the, went the wrong way. Wow. Uh, yeah, the thermo blade, you upgrade your knife with the workstation or the modification station or whatever it is called now. But you can cook fish if you hit them with your knife, and that makes it really quite nice. And yeah, we're just climbing up here. So this one I'm not as worried about coming up to. The interior grow bed is really all that I wanted. Um, but we'll see what's up here anyway. And the little pink and blue mushrooms, um, in the last update anyway, didn't really have any value. They were just ornamental. I'll have to double check. Oh yeah, there's pots. Cool. These are helpful as well. Cool. I don't know why I'm scanning this. I just felt like it. So, yeah. What are these, like, potatoes? Eh, sure. Cool. I think that's the same pot. There's three different types of pots. And of course I'm going to scan the chair. Oh, and there's another little PDA thing. Okay, so in the last update there was only one. Now there's three that I've found so far. So, we'll read that story later if you guys really want to know the storyline. Then, uh, better climb your way up here yourself. I don't really know how I just got up on top of here, I'll be honest. <laughs> that was kind of weird. Uh, Alright, we're going to jump. Maybe. Second thought. Maybe I'll just go back down. I don't know. Hmm. Because I kind of want to go out that way. Yeah, we'll just go down this way. No fall damage yet, so just go for it. Cool little land bridge right there. And we're back in the water. So kind of the one downside to being on the floating island is you are a little bit further away when you need to make supply runs, but ah, for the most part it's not too bad. So we're going to get some quartz so that we can make some solar panels and get started on the base. And again, like I mentioned in the first video, Avoid the desire to just start picking up everything. Because then you get lockers and lockers full of stuff that you just don't use. So, another little update that I noticed that is kind of a neat feature is now when you pull something out of a supply crate, your character automatically shuts it. Which is nice because it just makes it a little bit more realistic. Remaining. And I might be cutting it close on oxygen here. And eh, now we're good. Eventually I'll get a seam off and then these deeper runs will be will be quite quick, but yeah. Alright, well we're gonna make our way back to the island. And I'm gonna put some solar panels up and get some power to the base. And then kind of the real fun part begins. You start making your base your own and trying to find all the other missing blueprints like the Cyclops and things like that. Got to go to the Aurora and use the welder to fix the generator room and all that cool stuff. So this is really kind of my favorite part of the game. The first hour you're setting up your base, you're getting 
kind of just a general feel for things. And once you get all that started, then the real fun part of the game begins. So I'm curious to know what your favorite part of the game is. So if you're in one of those uh, commenting moods, feel free to tell me why you like this game. Uh, me personally, I love that it's, I don't know, it's not so hard to get materials to craft and the crafting is not unrealistic. I feel like, oh, I need some new titanium. I feel like some of the other games, like you go and you pick up these little squares of crap on the ground and then it magically turns into an ax. And then you use that ax to go and chop down a tree and that tree magically gets split up into logs. And anyway, this kind of has a, a loophole around that just because of the fabricator and kind of the newer technology behind it. So that's what I like. Anyway, take it easy. We'll see you next time.